welcome everyone to Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose, Let's Talk. And by popular demand, we have a great show for you tonight, this Thursday night. Miss Dawn Hammond is back, everyone. Hey, everyone's been out there asking me and talking with me and emailing me about, wow, that, that was a great show uh, on Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose. Let's talk with Don Hammond. We have Don Hammond. Don Hammond is going to be on the show each and every Thursday night from now on. Hey, she has been a godsend to this particular show because we're just going to let's talk. And please, please continue to write your comments in the comment section. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button because ordinary people with a godly purpose is basically about no color no creed and no personality this show is designed for you the people and because of that we're going to talk right now let's talk with miss dawn hammond what's up dawn hello hello and god bless you thank you for having me <laughs> Hey, hey, Dawn. You know what? The, the last show has been such a um, it's been such a godsend that that we have close to 195 listeners on the last show you have. And then when we spoke, um, we spoke earlier about bringing you back to the show, and you were like, "Hey, Rodney, you know what? Let's do it. Let's let's." I was like, "Okay, we're gonna have another show." And, then, and you're like, "No, no. I mean." Every time, every Thursday, and I'm like, "Oh yes, we're gonna be on every Thursday!" Woo! So, so you know what? We we you know people don't know this right now, but I'm going to say it anyway. We we had a little hiccup with the audio with the audio we had with the show for tonight's show, and we had a show that was um uh was going real good because we, we these shows are pre-recorded, guys, and the reason why they are is because so that way you can listen to them at any time. It doesn't have to be live. We know we have busy schedules in our lives so we would pre-record them but you know the devil's not gonna it's not gonna pull us down and, and we're gonna get this show into you guys tonight we had a lot of good tidbits and about a lot of different things and I want to recap some of the things and Dawn's gonna elaborate on those she was talking about dehydration we were talking about dehydration off the mic and she, she was talking about a lot of different things about let's talk but first the first thing I want to do is let her get out um, what she does about Discovery House, her her uh, email and her uh, URL, which her website, whatever her website is, and I'll let her give you guys some information on that. And please comment to Dawn or myself in the comment section on my YouTube channel. Go ahead, Dawn. Well, hello everyone, and I'm thankful that I'm back again. Um, you can reach me at Discovery House, and that's www. Um, Dot discoveryhouse.net that is my website you can also purchase my book discovery house on my website you can reach me on instagram follow me on instagram and that is discovery house underscore or you can follow me on facebook and that's discovery at discovery h um those are the ways that you can get in contact with me and um you can also just um just message me um anytime and we can just chop it up I hear that. I hear that. But you know what, Dawn? In in the time that we're in right now, and mm -hmm. the, the the you had some good tidbits that we, you and I were discussing in reference to dehydration. Um, mm -hmm. I put some bullets out there on micromanaging, the, the vomit, uh, ratchet. I love that ratchet girl. I love when you say ratchet. Uh, the spirit in the body. What, yeah. How we we're dropping the ball, victims, victims of our own. Victim, being victimized by our own victim, our own selves, and you know what? You hit the wearing the mask, and I, number eight, number eight. There is no future in your front, <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about those things tonight. And we're just gonna let's talk. We're just gonna let's talk. So you, you know what, Dawn? What 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 are the key things? And, and you know, we're we're going through a hard time in our nation right now with this other killing with this young man. Um, and I, I, I want to say to you again, what are our church? What, what, what do we need to do right now, Don? I know you're not the church. I know you're an entity of your own um, self righteousness, and most of all, you're you're a woman of you're a woman of God. But 
what do we need to do with our young men? What, what do we need to do for, to, to get that spirituality back out there that God is the center? So, um, this, let me, I'm going to stand corrected, stand corrected, I'm going to correct you again. Okay, correct, go ahead, correct on, me. Correct you, right? Yeah. But you said that, um, I'm, you the church, I'm the church, we all are the church, not okay. the building. Okay, not right? the building, okay. And, yeah, we are the church, and how we show up, whatever platform we have is our responsibility, and it also signifies what type of relationship you have with the creator, right? That's and right. so the thing is, is that, um... When we don't show up correctly, that's a sign that we are dehydrated. So I know that you have said those words and you wrote some things down when we was talking about. And unfortunately, um, they didn't get recorded, but we're doing it again. But I want to make sure that everybody understand what that word meant, what I meant by that. And that's just like when we're going and going and going and we're doing all these things, exercising or whatever, and we're not drinking enough, eventually our, our, our bodies are going to malfunction on us. And um, oftentimes we don't even know we're dehydrated until that happens and that's what happens even in our spirituality you know a lot of times we keep going to church you know reading off saying these scriptures and doing these routines and stuff that sounds good that we've been conditioned to do but then god requires every so often for us to live them and when we don't live them we um uh, we get dehydrated because um, our thirst um, begins to get um, overpowering because we're not accommodating the body if that makes sense mm -hmm. we're not accommodating the body of Christ. We're not accommodating our our um our walk with God. So the more you want to get closer to God, the, the the thirstier you get. And when you don't quench the thirst by feeding yourself with the Word of God, so you can so you can think right. Um, you, you become dehydrated, and a lot of people are dehydrated in the spirit because we can't see it. People think that they're so sound and in tune with God, and that's not true. And I'm not finna sit here on this telecast and act like I've mastered this, you know, because mm -hmm. today I've mastered it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I give you words and I give you what God gave me because sometimes whatever I lay on your ground, you might have to put it back on my ground because it's situational. That's why he calls us to, um, to help one another. When you're going through things, you need to be around healthy people and trusted voices. Not every voice that you hear or every voice that sounds good, you should trust trusted voices don't even trust my voice you know try the spirit by the spirit that's what you should be doing but oftentimes we don't do that and this is when we go back to the way we we got delivered i was just talking to a teacher today um we were sitting down after school and i was just we was talking about um you know when you have um, worked hard to be in a space in your life you know you understood what it took for you to get to that space and i'm speaking about myself and i would never go back to the vomit i came from because anything that causes you ill and causes you to be sick is vomit. And so when you know how hard you work, how do you allow something to cause you to regress? If it wasn't that something, it was me not being disciplined. And so I don't want to be dehydrated because it's a cost behind that. And it takes a time to build yourself back up. So why not just do the things that you need to do every day and be intentional about um, lessening the likelihood of you being dehydrated in God? You know, when you when you say that, is is there, Dawn? Is there is there a, um, for lack of words, um, the enemy? They always talk about the enemy. We always talk about the enemy. The enemy is doing this. The enemy is doing that. Is there, sometimes we trip ourselves up, don't we? I mean, we do. It, 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 we do, but we do. But this, the enemy. What does that say? The enemy. Enemy. <laughs> in, uh, in, in me. Uh -huh. Enemy. That thing inside of me that's against me. Remember I talked to you about that creature? Right, exactly. You know, it's a, we all have that nature with us that's against us, you know, and it collaborates with that other part of us that never, that God never made for us to be like, you know. Um, but we know that we have, we was born in sin, but that we wash through the blood of Jesus if we allow him to be. We allow um, him to wash us. But he does not come into our life but only by invitation. I have to accept him and his will and his way in order for me to get the benefits of being in communion with him. We don't want that. We want to have do things because we want to be comfortable in our walk with God. But you can't be comfortable in your walk with God because it requires you to stretch because he puts a demand on you to live up to the potential of which he created you to be. That is not always comfortable. But when we want to stay comfortable, we want to play um, with 
what I talked about um, in our previous session about the lay of the sea and that lukewarm part of us. We want to straggle the fence. Well, you can't go nowhere riding the fence. You either going to choose one side. You're going to ride on this side or the other side. But you can't, you can't go in there between. And I don't mean you got to be perfect when you're riding with God, but you got to strive every day to do what he's asking of us so we can be we can get the benefits of a life that's whole, that's um, that's disease free. Didn't say the weather wasn't gonna blow. Cause if it happened to Jesus, why well, we think that it can't happen to us? But we think that because we're in Christ, things don't supposed to be happening. But that's not true. The, it's gonna get intensified because the enemy don't want you to. Um, he don't want your money. He don't want your family. He don't want none of that. He wants to cause you to renege on your confession. And if he means that he can turn up the layers or the heat up in your life to cause you to get so distracted that you get fixated on that and not with the truth. Just like he did Job. Job, he, he cursed himself, but he didn't curse, he didn't curse Christ because he knew the truth. How many of us that really know the truth for real when it matters? Right. And when does it really matter when we, we're... Um... We're doing the things we're supposed to be doing, but really, when does it really matter? Just because we're walking the walk, do we always talk the talk? You know how that used to say that word? You, do we walk? We yeah. walk the walk, but do we talk the talk? <laughs> well, the evidence of who you are is not what you say with your. Say again, Don. Still there? No. There you go. I got you back. You I got okay. you back. See, see, see. Okay. <laughs> Somebody don't want this to happen, but it's going to happen. It's it, going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> so the question that you had me ask was um, about uh, what was you saying? I'm about walking the walk and talking the talk. Oh yeah, walk, walking the walk. Walking the walk. Walking the walk. Yeah. Clint, Clint Eastwood walking the walk. You're right. So the evidence of who you are. Is the good, the bad, and ugly. <laughs> the evidence of who you are is not what you say. It's what you do with your words. And your words have to become movement. And so that's what makes you authentic. And that's what makes you trustworthy when your words collaborate with your movement. They're both supposed to come along together. That's why when Jesus, or oh God, when he said, let there be light, there was light. There's, there's power in your words. It's like he said, there's death and life in the power of your tongue. And if you are speaking damnation on you, then damnation shall be your portion. But if you're speaking life to your situation, then life should be your portion. So the thing is, is that you can't speak one way and move another way. Those two have to collaborate with each other. Otherwise, there's going to be a breach in something, which most time is a breach in our relationship or our confession. Uh, and the that enemy balance. Does, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so the enemy doesn't want your money, he don't want your family, he don't want none of this stuff. He has a big agenda, because if he can stop your confession by turning up the heat in your life, he's got you so messed up and distracted that you get lose focus on the, true, the truth of, of what you say you know. And these times help us exercise our spiritual muscles, that we're not what we think we are. That's why no matter which way you go, glory to glory, you should always walk low, and you should always be teachable. You know, and you should always know that you have not mastered this. I'm always going to be a student of the word of God and of my walk with God. But a lot of times we'll get so, um, uh, we'll get so, uh, title bound in mm. Christian Christianity that, you know, our title becomes, gives us the big head. So now a lot of people need shots in their head to get that fluid off their head because your head so big that <laughs> it's so big like a watermelon head because you had some insecurities when you got this title that you allowed your title to be your compass. So now, without that, you're nothing. So then, even not even in Christianity, even in in um, celebrity or any other time, when you take right. somebody's title, you strip them away, you find out what it really is. So you got somebody killing themselves because life happened to them. Life gonna happen to anybody. And pan this pandemic taught us that. That's right. But we don't want to have these real conversations, like you know, when you ask people real, real, um, real questions. Like, why, what's your purpose behind what you're doing? They can't tell you 
And if they do, it don't make sense because that's, you know, why are you victimizing somebody? What did they do to you? I don't know. It's just something about them I don't like. What did they do to you? They didn't do nothing to you, but you're trying to hurt somebody. So then when you get hurt, you want somebody to have mercy on you. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So if you can't give somebody else mercy and keep your mouth shut, then why should somebody do that to you? Because whatever you put on the ground, you got to get it back. That's why I told you, you wrote that down. There's no future in your front. That was what we used in our singing years, our, our singing title. It was a song by Naughty by Nature. Even the secular music can kind of give us a lesson in it if you listen. There's no future That's in your so front. That's so true. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's no future in your front. But if you don't see well, then you're going to take everything for face value. But it's a lesson to everything. Even the flowers and trees, there's a lesson in everything. But because we don't see right, we miss our lesson. We miss things because we go on what it looked like from the surface. But sometimes it's a little deeper. Just like when you look at the paint on a painting. If you look at it even more, you can see the artist in his pain. You can see when they were happy. And every stroke that they take, even the music, you can hear in jazz and the instruments what the, what the person was saying when they made that composition. But if you don't listen well and you can't see well, you can't see all of these hidden treasures that's right in the front of you. Or it's right in your ear. You can't hear it. So now people mistaking God as um, their own appetite speaking because it sounds good and it makes you feel good. But oftentimes, God don't make us happy all the time when He tells us to do stuff. He stretches us, mm -hmm. which makes it uncomfortable. That's right. Which makes us rise and elevate. And it makes us have tough skin. It makes us more compassionate. It makes us do all these things. But you can't be dogmatic and just say you're a man or woman of God. And the, unfortunately, we got people in the church that manipulate God's word because they have status. We got people that manipulate God's word because they have status on a or, or, or it's a position somewhere or whatever. And people think very highly of them. And so they were twisted and stuff. Or they give them free reign to do stuff. So because you did it, it's okay. Right. But when somebody else do it, they get crucified. But the thing about Calvary, let's talk about that. Okay. When, the, when they had Jesus on that cross, uh -huh. the enemy, the, the people thought they was really, they was piercing him, but they didn't understand that every time they pierced him, water came out of them. So when, pe when people try to pierce you, you tell the devil, watch that spear, because you don't know what you was coming out of me. Every time you try to poke me, you don't know what's coming out of me. So you think blood is coming out of me. But it's water, living water. You know what I'm saying? For for people to not be dehydrated if you drink of it. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay. But we don't want to taste the sea. Yeah, we it, just want <laughs> we want we we want we want to pretend like we taste in the sea. But once you taste him and you know he's good, if you really bleed it, who would not want to do it again? That's right. That's you right. You know, and, and again, so the thing is is that we, when we look at all of these things and stuff, we come up with these old idiotic sayings and stuff to make our behavior justified. And mm. it's not justified. It's not right. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have to be perfect to see that because, again, I'm going to keep emphasizing that because even with my clients or anybody I talk to, I don't ever want people to think that I've arrived because I haven't. Because today I'm telling you something, something catastrophic can happen in my life that you will need to give me back my same words and remind me. That's what that's what us being in covenant does. That's why he doesn't want us to forsake the assembly. Because somebody in the assembly has the vitamin you need because all of us are plagued with some sort of disease. It's just some people you can see more than others. So because you don't want people to see yours, you'll sit up there and put people on front street. That's what that is. And, and you know when you when you when you talk about um, putting them on Front Street and the, the the first thing that came to my mind with the Front Street and also the 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 uh, there's no f uh, future in your front. It, it, it was a song that that triggered my mind. Was triggered in my mind was uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, the Crossroads. Yeah, and, the Crossroads. And, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and we we and we started talking about the Crossroads, cross, you know, the Crossroads. I, I can't sing that well, but you know, the Crossroads. Yeah. But, but yeah. we we come to those crossroads in our journey. And then it spins back on to uh, you were saying about uh, people that, you know, the, 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 the folks that are speaking to you, uh, the, 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 the pastors and whoever, you have to be, really be careful. And it, it brings back up that we said it, I said it to you one time before about the Jim Jones thing where they're giving them the, 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 the Kool-Aid and killed all those people. And, and we have to be we have to be very cognizant of that, don't we? 
have a right to you have a right to question anything when it comes to what God says because a lot of times we make people our God and so we will mix somebody's ideology up with God's word and because it sounds like it came from God it really did sound like you just haven't heard God so it sounds like it came from the book because some words that are in the book is mixed up with somebody else's thought pattern and the bottom line is God has set pastors and preachers down here to that that rightfully will um, not mishandle people and unfortunately they got to work even harder or what have you because there's people out here that don't use that office like they should and they mishandle it but the bottom line is that that's why it's important for us to get healed from situations from people and things like that so when you do encounter um other people in your life they won't come in with a job because um now with something look like what you've been through you automatically say here we go again and you've counted them out and they could be the very thing you've been praying for but the bottom line is is that when do it come a time in your life Even though I don't know how to get there, the first part of that is not to stop lying to myself and others. And I don't mean you got to run down the street and tell everybody about your business. That means being honest where you are and taking each day to do better. That's what that is. Yeah, and, and as we take each day to do better, we become a better uh, um, example of ourselves. Well, you start getting in alignment with what you were called to, and that's what one of the things in my book about your call place. Each one of us have our own fingerprint. Okay. Each one of us have our own fingerprint. That means it's an ingredient that God had you in mind when he created you, that only you can bring to the earth. Nobody else. Because you have your own fingerprint. That means you're your own special ingredient to make life delicious. But when you don't think your ingredient is purposeful because you measure yourself according to what people say you should be like, then you start running after that. And that's why we can go to these cemeteries and see all these unearthed gifts or even in the prisons because they were trying to get stuff fast and illegally and, and or just working themselves hard. And God never called you to that. And you never took the time to be. So he could tell you what you was called to so you could cultivate that. So you died leaving the world without your ingredient like it should have been mm. and that's a tragedy i like you know that what I mean? that's a tragedy because who said it what you what other people said is right if we're supposed to be peculiar people then there's no way that i'm supposed to navigate this world just like you life would not be delicious and wholesome if everybody was the same and so because we don't understand that we're supposed to be peculiar we say these things but when you when you say something you understand it you'll move like that so in like in my book or whatever when you talk about discovering your house mm-hmm. you're talking about discovering your special call place that god called you to to be in this earth and when you come into collaboration with that means and you start cultivating that seed that he already placed in you not only do you feel fulfilled as a person but you also can w- go through life like fluid like when you're walking in what you called to do nobody has to be okay with your calling the only person need to be okay with your calling is you and god you know what I mean? Because I like you weren't supposed to execute it. You know, he gave it to you, but you're supposed to execute it. But it is people that's going to be able to, they're going to become magnets to your calling. But again, you're not for everybody because everybody not your assignment. That's but when, right. we, when we don't understand all of that, then we'll run after here. We'll run out after people trying to get them to accept us. And we don't even accept ourselves. That's just the same thing with Discovery House came from my initials, D.H., Mm-hmm. And you might see something else that might say Discovery House, but it didn't come from that. It came from my initials. I discovered my house. When you start understanding your value mm. and you keep it up your home, then you leave room for people to want to be by you. You also leave room for um, for the, the, the appreciation of your house to get higher. You're not going to buy a house in the neighborhood if it depreciates. Because that means that the, you won't be able to resell your property or get the, the value that you feel like you should get for your home because you're, in, you, you're, you're close to something that's devalued. That's the same thing with our relationships. When we have relationships with people that devalue us, then we start compromising and then the value of us go down. And God never meant for that to happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so when we don't understand our own value, then we don't put a demand on others to understand what that value is and don't cross the line. And so we end up allowing people to trespass against us. Uh-oh. We have a trespassing sign outside our yard, but we allow people to come in 
when they should stay on the porch of our life, we'll invite them inside the house. And then they'll clutter up our home and, 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 and demolish it. And then we stuck with the debris of what somebody did when they shouldn't have been invited in the first place. And we all know whenever you invite somebody in your house, even if it's the devil, as a good entertainer, you got to entertain your guest. Ooh. So our and house so is no longer safe. It's not safe because, again, when you don't clean those windows, and that's a chapter in my book, too, about window work. When you don't clean your windows, you can't foresee danger, nor can you foresee what you can't let light in. So this is what's happening in our life. We have rooms in our homes that are clean and then some of them are not. And so we'll just open the blinds just enough so people can see certain parts of us. But it's still corners of our life that's still in darkness. And until we clean the whole window, the room can't get illuminated with light so truth can be let in. So now, instead of us decluttering and cleaning up, we'll keep asking God to bring things in our life. So we got all of these things in our life and our houses that don't belong long because every season you need to change up the furniture and everything else and clean so we allow people to come into that we allow all these things to come in the house and it's good things in there but because you got so much stuff in there you don't know what's good or not so you sifting through all of this thing that's hoarded mm. and you can't you can't get um the beauty of our homes when we got too much junk up in there that's why we have a port of exit exit in our body to get the bad waste out so when you keep emotional dysfunctional things inside of us, we become dysfunctional in our emotions. When we don't eat right, we start to causing disease to our organs and making them work harder. And then when we're frustrated or, or we don't walk in forgiveness, then we keep that stuff and it causes our body to break down. Now let me just make sure that we understand this. There's a difference between um, forgiveness and reconciliation. And so people think, oh, because somebody doesn't fool with you like they used to, is that they don't forgive you. That's not true. But manipulators will try to manipulate that because they mirror each other, but they're not the same. I can still forgive you, but not be reconciled with you. So we can't sit at the same table because we're not reconciled. Because I might forgive you, but you might not be sorry. The forgiveness wasn't for you. It was for me, to free me. Because I'm not going to let you put me in bondage, hold on to something that you did. But at the same time, we would never sit and break bread together because we didn't fix the issue. That's what reconciliation is. So when you find marriages, for instance, that they could have had forgiveness in it, but because they didn't reconcile the situation, the likelihood of the problem reoccurring again is really high. Or them getting back together like they should in the way God called marriage to be won't be because they did not fix the situation. And so because it mirrors people well, mistaking you as not being a forgiven person, it's not that. It's just that we're not reconciled. And until we fix what broke it in the first place, then we will never be mended, but we can sit together again. Oh, and you know what? When you were saying all that, the first thing I thought of, and this might sound kind of funny, is spiritual constipation. Spiritual constipation. If you can't, you know, if you can't push out all that bad stuff out of your spiritual mind and you're constipated, you know, when people are, you, you, they tell you you have to take some some Miralax or something, but but it's that spiritual constipation that sometimes some of us get and and, and we don't know how to get, you know, to, to unclog it. And, and well, it's, it's easy to unclog it. Okay. It's like our arteries. You know okay. What I'm okay. If you. If you, if you have cholesterol issues or whatever else, that means your body don't rightfully divide fat. When you know what your triggers is, that means that your spirituality doesn't rightfully divide that kind of stuff. Everybody got a thorn in their side. That's why you can't stay in, sp in spaces too long when you know where you're limited at until you get a little bit stronger there, right? But the bottom line is you're not going to flow correctly if you keep... Um, um, choosing to stay clogged up because you gotta die to yourself when you want to get unclogged. That means you gotta change your methods on how you eating and all of that. It's a lifestyle, right? And if you don't change it, then you're not gonna get the heart health that you would like. You're just not gonna have it. And a lot of people have heart conditions in the spirit. You know, they want to have the best of both worlds and stuff. They want to appear to be certain way, but we keep carrying that curse that, that went on. I talked to you when we previously recorded about the curse of Adam and Eve. You know, we That's were never right. meant to have what God, God created us. That's but we right. carried on that, cur that curse by hiding, so we got these masks. We've been having a mask, but now we got another layer of it because now we physically can't see all of you. But 
but, but people have been walking around that for years, not physically seeing the truth. So then when you see the truth to somebody, you're shocked. But some of the flags were still there, but people see what they want to see. If I'm if I like somebody and their personality is cool, then I'm gonna protect even I'm gonna protect them at a fault, even if you're gonna make them sick in the process. If you can do something for me, then I ain't gonna say nothing about your infirmity. No one is hindering you because you're rendering me a service. You know what I mean? It's kind of sort of like prostitution. You know, we can prostitute our gifts out. We can prostitute our salvation out just so we can be a company with people that, that don't have the keys to our life. Now, how crazy do that sound? But we do that often. We all have been guilty of that. But when you start coming into the truth, then people are not going to like you because you're not able to be of service to them in the capacity you was before. So let's say, for instance, if I don't say things, like I, I pretty much, I'm one of them people that when I get fed up, I get fed up, but I take a lot and I let things go or whatever. But when I say something, you thinking I'm getting offended because I'm saying something. No, it's because you're not used to me saying something. You know, I'm not going to let you keep doing that because you teach people how to treat you. You don't get to, because God didn't raise us to be punks in the kingdom. And oftentimes people think that as you, because you're a Christian that you got to be a punk too. I ain't a punk. <laughs> go, go, go ahead, go ahead, sister. Because she's from Chicago now. She yeah. she, 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 she ain't no punk. punk. She ain't no I'm punk. punk. <laughs> no, and I'm not going to allow people to make me feel left man because I don't do things the way you do. See, the thing is, is that who said this is right? So when I wrote my, wrote my book, and I told you before, when I wrote my book, the right. first 60 pages where the numbers and stuff was mixed up and I could have just not did that but I wanted to put lessons in there how we get so fixated on stuff that don't even matter we miss God in certain things in our life because we all look I can't read so some people probably didn't even read my book because it was the comma wasn't there or the pages were duplicated 67 67 67 and they like all this what kind of book is this is all wrong who said it was wrong because it's because it ain't the way everybody else do it See, I embrace my uniqueness. I'm not going to be like everybody else. And unfortunately, it's, it's sad that um, that people think that because people don't do things the way other people don't, don't do it, that they think it's wrong. You know, my skin color is not wrong because it don't look like theirs. My, my, um, my personality is not wrong if it's not hurting anybody because it's not like everybody else's. I don't supposed to be like everybody else. If I was, my fingerprint, my genome, which is my DNA, would look like everybody else. I embrace my own speciality. I embrace my ingredient. And see, unfortunately, people ain't going to tell you that they're jealous of you or, or they envious the fact that you had enough in you to embrace that when they want to, but they don't know how. Instead of asking, how did you get there? They'll sit there and hate on it. It's a shame. It but is. there's nothing that nobody can do to me. This it is, is the space that I got right now that's going to cause me to prostitute myself out so I can get aroused out of you to accept me. As long as I accept me and God accept me, that is all that matters. That's how much I value myself. But it wasn't always like that. I had to do the work to get there. And that's the problem. We live in a microwave society now. People don't really want to do the true work to get whole within. Because when the integrity of your inside is straight, then everything outside of you, got it's like a magnet. It starts coming to you. So some of the ceilings that we have over our head that I talked about last time, it's because of our own doing. Because we won't doubt ourselves because it's uncomfortable. But death to yourself is not a death that you won't recover. It's actually an insurance policy that you will recover if you do it the way that it was originally planned for you. But the fact is, we want to micromanage how that happens. And you it's not working. And so it ain't about the church because we're the church. It's about what are you doing in the space that you're in to make sure that you're cultivating not only excellence, but you're living up to your true potential. And if you don't know what that is, say that. It's okay to not be okay. It's not okay for us to stay that way. Because if you keep pretending, one day your mind will snap. That's why we can go to the mental health hospitals and we see people speaking the scripture. Because there's power in the word of God. It can work against you or for you. When you mismanage God's word, it can work against you or for you. And that doesn't mean that everybody going to lose their mind if they do it wrong. But certain things are just not going to happen in your life. And then you did that. The devil didn't do that. The enemy in you, that creature in you that you decided to let lead you, defeated you. And that didn't have nothing to do. That had something to do with your will. Your will was to go that way when you knew that it wasn't the way you should go. And then after a while, you lose your sense of direction and you don't know what's right or wrong. 
And then you wonder why your life ain't what it should be. It ain't got nothing to do with money. It don't have nothing to do with titles or none of that, Mr. Jacobs. Because it's rich people that's hurting themselves. It's rich people that's de- depressed. So it's not that. But we so money hungry. That's not either. Because when you have things that people are most likely want to be around you because of what they think you can give them. But when you got them people around you that knew you and when you ain't had nothing to give them and they there for you and you treat them like they garbage, shame on you. Shame on you, because don't think it's strange when you get burnt. You burn somebody else that really legitimately wanted to see you, win, believed in, believed in you and all of that, and you gave them your tail to kiss for somebody that was fake, plastic, that wanted something from you. And then we get depressed and everything else. Why did they do me like that? Why did you do them like that? You see how that go? Yeah, it, it is. I, I, it is. I, it's, I, I, it's you know great. the Samaritan? Yes. You know how to do Samaritan? Um... If he had got fixated on the Levite and the priest that passed him up, those are the people that should have came to see about that. If he got so fixated on that, he would have missed his blessing because the Samaritan, the scum of the earth, the least person came to see about him and housed him up with the money he had. What if he got fixated on the fact that they didn't come see about him? He still would have been laying there half dead and missed his moment because he did not see the bigger picture. It's not who come see about you, that, that who didn't come and see about you. It's who, who did come see about you. And so we'll get fixed on the who didn't do it. That we didn't even realize that somebody did come. And we'll denounce them people that was with us for the people that didn't come. Yeah, and, 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 and shame you, on yeah, and sh- shame on you, shame on, and shame on me, because I, I just had a talk tonight, tonight with a, a good spiritual brother of mine. I, I haven't known him long, but it seems like I've known him for a long, very long time. And he, we were, he was talking to me about, you know, ethics and how, how, how we should have ethics in everything that we do, not just, not just because. We have to have that in our um, in our laws and bylaws, but we should have. We, we, I mean, with, with in order to trust someone, or in order to 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 understand where they're coming from, you got to have some type of ethic about you. And so, just, just say for instance about the ethics. Just say for instance, some people, you know, when you understand people, especially when you get to know people and stuff, you understand what nurtures them. And so when you understand what nurtures somebody, then you're going to understand why some of the things that they should, we believe they should have, they don't. But mm. it comes a time. Okay, Donna. Really All right, you're talking, girl. You're talking. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah, so, <laughs> but it comes a time when you can't keep blaming your history on your present or your future. Because in the beginning of our life, Jacobs, our parents, our family had to pin our life. But you know what? Any book, they got cliffhangers, they got juicy parts, they got sad parts, they got all of this. But we determine how long the chapter lasts when we get the pen to our life, when we get to that point we're accountable for ourselves. And we will tend to stay back in the beginning of our chapters, blaming the other chapters of why they look the way they do because of the beginning. But nothing at the beginning looked like the end. That's why it's important for us not to choke in the process because... In the blink of an eye, something can change, but because it looks a certain way, we are already predetermined the end and mess ourselves up. And we already predetermined our, our, our future, and our story is not over because we're still living. But instead of trying to um, write the pages that we want to see in our life by changing and by um, denouncing some things that happened to us in our past so it won't show up in our present, we'll act like it's not there. But just like any root. It will unearth itself in the un, un, um, in the unconvenient places in our life. And so if we don't deal with them, they'll deal with us. Case in point, in my driveway, I have big 40-foot trees around my house, a lot of trees. And who would know? Because I'm a city girl. I don't mess with trees. I don't have a green thumb. I'm trying to get one. But who would have known that this 40-foot tree roots were so big that it went all the way across the street to my neighbor's house but it bust up the concrete in my in my driveway but nobody knew years ago that underneath the ground it was these giant roots that was going to erupt sooner or later you don't get to decide when that happens but you need to but if they was pruned and they was cut when they should have been it would have never happened Mm. it would have never happened and that's what i'm talking about in that book about 
we were gifted with even our journey it was all for the betterment of ourselves even though it didn't feel good because it was only through them two tough times just like slavery it was a benefit in slavery to some degree because it taught us what perseverance really mean nobody on this earth can persevere like we can and that's the truth hmm. as a people we persevere right. we know how to make things out of nothing well, we had to go through some things to understand how to do that. We had to cross and the so, other side. That's we, right. That, back to those crossroads. Yeah. So we can't spit on everything that might have looked bad because it, we got some gems out of that. But if you don't look at it correctly, then we then we mess ourselves up because there is power in pain. It can work against you or it can work for you. It's just about how you look at it. That's why it's good to be a company and have different perspectives so you can see things a little bit different. Because if you have your own ideology and your own thought pattern to fall back on, then how do you evolve? How do you evolve? How do you how do you look at things a little bit? Are you there? We, we just lost Dawn, but we're going to get her back. Because we know she's still there. Deeper and, 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 there and she bigger go. than what they're thinking. I hear you, you hear me? Yeah, you, you broke up you a little me? bit. You broke up a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? The thing is, we still, that's that word, perseverance. We still press through. The goal is, is that it's okay for us not to be okay. It's not okay for us to stay that way. That's a choice. But we can't we can't decide to be six because we we don't want people to know reform because whatever's under the ground is gonna come back that's right we have to reform ourselves our way of thinking right every season of our life just like and in my my uh, my chapter about window work i remember jacobs when we i was growing up every spring we had to take the curtains down and clean them and i used to think about why are we doing that why why do we do that why don't we just get some nice curtains and just keep them up there <laughs> you know when we was prepared for the next season of our of, of, of the of the um of the, of, of the, our lives we was, we was preparing our house for the next season that's right why don't we do that to our own selves in every season, you can't take every priority because every priority is there, you'll be overwhelmed. Some priorities don't belong in that season, so you got to decide what belongs and what don't belong. Then you got to clean up from the residue from the last season, so your house can be prepared. I'm not gonna wear no fur coat in North Carolina. I don't wear one in Michigan and Chicago. <laughs> but I ain't gonna put a chinchilla on in Chicago. That's I'm right. In, in North Carolina, I'm gonna burn up. But do 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 you do you do spring cleaning in your in, in your do. your thought pattern? I do. Because every so often you gotta go in within yourself and you gotta do some pruning. And what worked in your last season ain't gonna work in this season. That's that's why you spring it spring forward, right? Right. But the <laughs> thing is, when you don't prune the trees, then your tree will go eventually die. Ooh. Right. It's mm. going to start having root rot. The trunk is not going to be as wholesome as it should be. And the tree going to try to keep rehealing itself. But after a while, it's, gonna, it's not going to be able to do it because you don't have the right fertilizer. And, and, and how crucial is that, Don? How, how crucial is that fertilizer? It, it's so crucial because every type of fertilizer don't belong on your ground. Wow. You don't, it don't. It does not belong on your ground. Just because people have fertilizer, I mean, it belongs on your ground. You need to make sure that the right fertilizer for the season that you're in will cause you to flourish. Because you notice that when we see plants and flowers and stuff, some of my flowers in my yard, every other year they change in different colors. One year it might be purple, and next next year it might be pink for two years. But the fact is, is that I know my trees and I know what type of fertilizer for them to grow and blossom. And they still changing, but they still growing strong. Now, if my neighbor put what they put on their trees, on their bushes, or their flowers, and they don't have what I have, how likely is it my tree or my flowers going to blossom correctly? That's right. That's right. You know, it's not. And then if you don't have a green thumb, you don't even know if it's a weed or a flower. So you up here fertilizing weeds. Yeah, and they can't grow. That's right. And they can, well, they're going to tear up everything because it only takes one weed mm -hmm. to call the flowers to die. Unhappy. That's why you gotta you gotta have an eye to see mm. correctly, so you will know what is what, so you won't be pulling up the wrong thing. It's some people pulling up flowers in their life when and leaving the weeds. Mm. 
We do, we, we, we do that often. We, we don't we do that yeah. often? Yeah, and we wonder why we got turmoil in our life. You know what I'm saying? Or your relationships are not flourishing. Could it be that you got some weed activity going on that's not conducive for somebody else's flowers to sprout up? And if you care about your relationships and stuff, you will make sure you're not contributing to the demise of them. Christian. Uh oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh. That goes back to that yes. spiritual constipation. <laughs> right. put, that's a new that's that, a new chapter back, in your book. <laughs> yeah, but it goes back to the, the accountability. Like we always want to blame everybody else. My thing is this: if I fall back from anybody or whatever else, I did that. So if I'm robbing myself for your relationship with that person, then that's me doing it. I own it. But trust that if I ever do that, then you gotta believe there's a reason for that. But most people don't have a reason for that because I do value my relationships. But one thing I cannot be, I can't be nothing to you but what you allow me to be. And if you're high maintenance and I got to prostitute myself out or I got to dumb myself down to be in your company, then you knocking at the wrong door because I'm not ringing my doorbell. I'm not answering my door because I ain't rap like that. Friendships and relationships is reciprocal. You might be able to give me time and I might be able to give you money, but we always give it to each other. It's not one-sided. And when it's one-sided, it's not going to last. And what happens is you deplete the other person. So now they're wounded going into another relationship, bleeding on somebody else because they didn't get treated right before and they didn't get healed. You will not do that to me. I know my value. And if we can't treat each other with that mutual line of respect and what you said, the ethics of what a relationship is, then we don't need to be in communion with each other. And it don't matter who you are. You can be my family. You can be a person I've known for 30 some years. The bottom line is that if you're not conducive for me to thrive, we, we, we just going to be limits to what we can do with each other. And that's not what God wanted us to be. But when you don't look at relationships right and connections correctly, and you look at it in a dysfunctional way or like it's disposable, you'll treat it like anything. And it's wrong. It's depleting. It wears people down. But we all supposed to be a village. We can't grow together when we got weeds going up along out of us. That's why he said he's going to separate the wheat from the tear, right? That's right. That's right. And, and you know, he's going he gonna to cause that separation. Because when you start being around certain things, you start seeing what is true and what's not true. That That's don't mean right. that you can't become true. That just means that you don't want to be true. Because whenever you want to be true, then you will just change some things. And when you don't know how to change, you'll go to somebody that do, that has done it. So you can do better. Instead of manipulating people and blaming everybody else or why you the way you are. Your history or nothing else or your trauma don't give you a right to bleed on other people. It don't give you a right to dishonor yourself. But ultimately, we have made um, things okay because that's the spirit in the air to be foul and vile to people or whatever else. And anything goes because I did it. Don't make it right. No, it doesn't. And so now life is getting harder. And it's not because of people. It's because of what we allow. When you allow certain things to come in your mess, then don't get str think it's strange when it start growing things that's against you. And again, again, folks, we've been listening to Ordinary People with a Godly Purpose. Let's talk with Dawn Hammond. And you, you know what? The, everything she's been saying tonight, uh, it, it, it revolves around who we are as a person, who we are as a being, and most of all, who we are as Christians. So you, you want to make sure that everything you do in your life, you do it with a purpose and don't have those weeds. <laughs> because those weeds can hurt. They can hurt. They can hurt. And sometimes they got spiky things on them. Them thorns, things them thorns. Them thorns. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, again, I appreciate everyone listening tonight. Most of all, I appreciate Dawn being here. She's going to be here from now on. She's going to be on the show each and every Thursday night. I just want everyone to know to please put something down in the comment areas if it's for Dawn but to say, hey, Dawn, I got this question for you. I love what you're saying. Or if you have a question for me, and again, continue what continue. topic do you want us to talk about what topic exactly exactly if you yeah good that, that's a good one girl that's a good one <laughs> if, if there's a topic you want us to talk about we we can talk about yeah. we, because it's called let's talk so we, we're gonna yeah. talk about it we're gonna talk about it because i know don't gonna talk about it <laughs> yeah and we can agree to disagree this is all about us this is 
get different perspectives because it's all about at the end of the day it's all about us growing you know we can't grow um, unless we're cultivating the ground and part of cultivating the ground is getting different perspectives on things so we can think a little bit different and try to think in a way um, try our best every day or every in every situation to think the way God wants us to think it's nothing deep about that because I am far from I'm not one of them people that's so deep that I'm no earthly good because you got to have balance and everything even Jesus smelled like the sheep and he sat around him he didn't talk about the gospels all the time he laughed and everything else but for the life of me you know we do we do we don't do that you got to be balanced and everything everything you overdo is a sin if you eat too much it's gluttony if you if you um if you um covet somebody too much you putting them up as an idol it's it's, it's all sin so God wants us to be balanced and he wants us to be be identified with the things that we feel that, that's hurting us that we need deliverance from because you can't ask him to deliver you from something you don't see how are you gonna pray about that when you don't even know that you need to be delivered exactly and and with that with that we're going to uh we're going to meet back with you next thursday and we're going to discuss a little bit more of what dawn is talking about because it, she didn't hit on another topic that that is not only uh, needs to be discussed, but we're 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 sometimes we on shaky ground. And again, I I appreciate everyone that's listening in tonight, and most of all, I appreciate having Dawn. And, and she's like again, like, again, she's gonna be here each and every Thursday with me, and we're gonna be hashing Yay. out. Yep, <laughs> we're gonna be hashing out. Let's talk. And Dawn, go ahead and give your your website again. Um, it's www.discoveryhouse.net. Um, you can also purchase my book on um, on my website. You can also go to Amazon and look up Discovery House or put in my name, Dawn R. Hammond. Um, actually, that's my second book. The other book is Dawn of the Day, what um, Rodney talked about um, the last time I was on. And it's just 31 days. I sent out little Dawn of the Days, my little own personal quotes with a hashtag called Dawn of the Day. You can catch me and follow me on Instagram at um, Discovery House underscore, or you can catch me on Facebook at at Discovery House H. Um, anyway, those are the ways that you can get in touch with me, um, and I'll be more than happy because um, I always like meeting people. But I'll be more than happy to just talk with you um, and see what I can do if I'm able to be a tool for you. Because Ronnie, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna let you um, close us out. But one thing that I do in my coaching services, the first 15 minutes I give for free because I want to make sure not only um, I compatible for you but you compatible for me everything ain't always about money I got to make sure that you're my assignment because I am a firm believer that everybody's not my assignment and if I if I go out of that will then I'm out of God's will and it won't be blessed and I want all of us to be blessed and the bottom line is is that but if I can be a tool in helping you get to wherever you need to be within I'm more than happy to do it because that's what we all called to do is to build each other up and that's what God called me to do is to be a builder and we have to be within our assignments I've I heard that from my other spiritual brother that we was talking the other night when I was telling Dawn. But we have to be within our assignments. Every Everyone's right. not your assignment. So mm -hmm. let's talk. Let's have a conversation each and every Thursday night with Dawn Hammond and Rodney Jacobs. We'll be back with you next Thursday. Again, you can listen to this podcast each and every night, not just Thursday, mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. it's recorded. And you can listen as many times as you want. If Again, like Dawn said, if there's a topic you want to talk about, let us know in the comment section. If there's something you need to know and you have something personal and you don't want anyone else to know, email Dawn, uh, text me, email me, um, uh, 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 hey, any type of uh, part of media that we have, our platforms, go onto our platforms and, and check us out. And most of all, we appreciate each and every person that's been listening in to let's talk ordinary people with a godly purpose and we'll hear from you again next thursday but again always listen each and every night if you if you want to listen to more than once go ahead but we'll be yeah. back next week yeah, yeah. oh rodney one go more ahead thing you. One, one more thing i didn't leave my email address it's okay discovery how five at gmail.com and you heard that that was with dawn go ahead dawn say that again discoveryhouse5 at gmail.com that is my um, my email address I'll be more than happy to receive um, any questions or, or concerns or feedback or what have you but ultimately it's about all of us getting healthy and if we can do that together that just makes it more delicious 
Well, I, you know what? We're going to say this in unison to the count of three. We're going to say it together, Don. Me and you, we're going to say let's talk. One, two, three. Let's, let's talk. talk. We'll let's hear from talk. you next week. Let's talk. Let's talk. We'll hear from you next week. Have a good night, everyone. Be blessed.